Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Mirana. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining.
Templar assassin. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. That's right, it all comes down to this game number three in the grand finals between Vega Squadron and Team Secret Blitz. You just heard the analysts and their predictions. What are your thoughts? Who's winning this one? I think it's going to be Vega. I like their lineup. I feel like they have their comfort heroes. I'm super excited just to see a no one Shadow Fiend again because yes. I feel like it's been banned or people just don't let him have it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hyped as hell. Yeah, I think... Like I was kind of saying, I feel like he's definitely top 10, maybe even top 5 SFs out there right now. And we get the opportunity in this final game to see if that actually holds up. Vega Squadron, though, what about this last pick? They've got the double defensive heroes that actually sometimes works out in an offensive synergy way. The Shatter Demon and Dazzle, where you can go with the disruption combination into the follow-up Shadow Wave, actually does a good amount of damage, but it is a rather defensive duo for the most part. Yeah, I think uh, the Shadow Demon is in response to just getting rid of Mirana as a hero to make sure that she can't really do anything, and the Poison and the Purge actually work really well against the Templar Assassin. Uh, and now for some reason I like envision like Kevin being thrown at the Templar Assassin to slow him down, but uh, I think that for the most part it's just going to be the Mirana gets countered by the Disruption, and the Shadow Fiend's going to have a really good time uh, throughout the game. Like the mid lane, a lot of people say like obviously TA does well, but if the Shadow Fiend gets really aggressive early on in the beginning, it's actually kind of hard for the TA to get control again because he can just go back to the stacks. And this is a hero like Seema the Slayer is playing the Dazzle. We've seen it, I think we've actually casted so many of these games where he just stacks the Radiant side and makes yep. sure that the Shadow Fiend doesn't die. And this is kind of a sign, right, of that early aggression that you're talking about from the SF. He goes for um, the first level into Shadow Rays. I think this is just the standard nowadays is that you don't necessarily have to go for that Wraith Band because uh, it's going to take so long to get the bottle if yeah. you do. 
against a hero like Templar Assassin, so just going for the raise early on is perfectly fine. Yeah, this will ensure a bit better CS against the overwhelming amount of damage of the Refraction, and who knows, could be a good amount of early harassment as well. See already, the Dazzle putting pressure on Weeha if possible, burning through the first level of those Refractions. Uh, meanwhile, we do have an aggro duo coming out from Vega, Pasha, Vishu, as well as Solo, pairing up as the Shadow Demon Ember Spirit against Eternal Envy's Razor and Puppy's Naga Sire. Now, this is the thing that I was most concerned about, is that if Vega ran standard lanes, they were going to be matched with a Clockwork versus Razor, and that was just not going to be favorable. So I like the way that Vega have kind of changed things up. Now Mag is one versus one against Misery, and I think he will do at least better than going up against the Razor. Yeah, the Clockwork actually does perfectly fine against the Murana, but uh, at top... The combo, they get some of the damage out from the Shadow Wave. Puppy, though, has a very high starting armor. Naga Siren, uh, at 6 armor, at level 1, is able to tank that uh, physical damage from the Shadow Wave a bit better than most other supports. Yeah, and instantly Pasha loses that Flame Guard. That level 1 Flame Guard is just so bad, which is why oftentimes you'll see, instead of having a dedicated tri-lane, just a dual lane with this, uh, this Ember Spirit, because you want to try to give him levels if you can. And Envy should be fine at top. Like, as long as he grabs one of the early levels of the Unstable Current, it's going to be so hard for them to just straight initiate on him with, this, uh, with the Shadow Demon, because the turnaround potential is so high. The Crystal Maiden can rotate at any time. They do have a ward on this side of the map, but uh, Pai Lai Dai should have a free time of this jungle right now. Yeah, who knows? Pai might even uh, pick up an early smoke or something. We could see some early movement from him. Uh, Solo's going to rotate around, try and get that uh, double damage. Of course, disruption for Frostbite. He's actually going to try and block the Crystal Maiden in and funnel him towards the rest of his team. But that being said, Puppy's actually cutting across. Pasha's trying to chase him down. He does have the Flame Guard actually chains up Eternal Envy, he's but still he's not stuck. getting enough space. He's losing all of his damage now. The damage comes out. Shallow Grave just in time. Oh, no one's up there now, no one. He's coming in with a double damage, and that will push back the rest of Team Secret. And Pasha will now heal back up with the Healing Cell. Man, if no one actually had him rotated there, they definitely would have been happy mm -hmm. with that first blood right there. Uh, he thought the timing on the chains would have been enough to get him out of there, but that level 1 searing chain this actually doesn't do anything. It's a 1 second disable, the Razor's perfectly fine playing against that. The range on the Static Link's a lot higher than you'd think, and again, he's going to go for him at top. He knows that uh, he doesn't have the chains, and the supports are playing pretty far back because they're mostly out of regen now. Have been denied. No one is actually 16 and 2. Despite the fact that he made that rotation, he's still even or even ahead of Weeha's CS. And this is a good sign for things to come. He doesn't have any of those sacks. Bottom lane, Mag is actually committing misery. He caught him with the uh, leap arrow and falls out with a star storm. Throws his whole entire mana pool to be able to get the kill on Mag. But Team Secret take the early lead with first blood. That's so massive for the, end of the 1v1 matchup for misery to actually win it. Uh, that's going to set him back on the clockwork so much. He doesn't even have boots yet. He's gonna grab boots, but still only at 700 gold. Actually grabs the bottle and going for that all-in commitment is pretty massive because this allows Misery to just kind of snowball off of this lane. And if he decides to go for ganks at some point, it's okay for him. They're gonna pop Highlight Die. Looks like he managed to get off the Frostbite and Solo may go down instead, but the chain actually controls the uh, Crystal Main enough for them to be able to get that kill. Nice play by the Dazzle. The early pickup of the TP scroll, perhaps a little bit unexpected for Team Secret. He simply shall graves himself and TPs out. So they get the free kill on the support and back themselves away. That being said, they burn through a lot of regen. Oh, this Murana. Going for the sneaky arrow there. You've got to shoot the ones they don't expect. That was pretty far distance, but uh, Mag has plenty of time to react. And this is a lane that we don't often see Murana in a one-on-one -on -one lane actually being able to win. But Misery is one of those players where I feel like he's individually skilled enough that if you do give him this comfort 1v1 type of matchup, he's going to feel so happy about it. He's probably thinking to himself, finally, I don't have to go against an aggressive tri-lane. And this is one of those scenarios where uh, Misery, he sees an advantage is really just pushing. It used to be like the... the Laning phase, you would often see is like early phase boots where you would try and build up your physical damage. But here, Misery goes for the uh, Orb of Venom on a range shield just to be able to really push that harassment advantage over the clockwork and keep him back. And Mag's responding with maxed out Rocket Flare because oh, he knows that's here. the best he way even to needs get the, tango. the ensnare comes out, the arrow will land. Now, Cox managed to push back Puppy though, and that will actually leave Team Secret unable to go for that kill. What a smooth move by Puppy though, eating that Tango so he doesn't have to skip the animation at all. Uh, unfortunately doesn't grab the kill, but Seam of the Slayer is down here now and this is just kind of turned into a dual lane and this should be a rotation though. Like the bottom lane hasn't gone well enough and the Ember is kind of just getting forced out a lot of the times by the Razor. Like the overall CSing war is being pretty dominantly won by Secret right now. 
So Pasha will now take over that safe lane, start farming up. Mag just needs a little bit more experience till he has that level six. But where does he really go with that one? I feel like oftentimes Templar Assassin is just a, a bad hero for you to try and go on. As a clockwork, speaking of that, no one needs desperately needs some help. He's gonna try and get the counter kill on a puppy, but I think he knows he's in unless the Shao Grave comes in and saves him. Oh my god! They're actually gonna be able to get the kill on Weeha! What a turnaround! The Rocket, Shallow Grave, Vega Squatch are just on point with their reactions. And now they may even go for more. Mag, unfortunately. Unfortunately, still not level six. They found Pylai die in the jungle, but can't catch him. Yeah, that would have been so huge if they were actually able to get another kill there, but still being able to get a kill on the enemy TA when she was going so aggressively like that helps out no one a ton. And this is what we've seen Vega do throughout the entire tournament. They're not afraid to rotate three heroes at just the six minute mark to secure their mid lane. So Marana makes her way back down to bottom. Pasha actually has level five and a half. Once he has that level 6, he'll feel a lot more comfortable sitting solo in this lane. Mag's about to hit level 6 too, and if you gank with the Clockwork into the mid lane, it's actually not too bad, because the TA loses the charges pretty quickly against the Battery Assault, but you're going to have to rotate a Dust up here too, and in anticipation of Mag hitting level 6, you've got Solo up here, but he doesn't really have the mana to do this, and he's going to get scouted out. Mag has his level 6, still needs some mana though, so he may just head on back to base. There's no reason for him to stay up there. Ready to go. He's just trying to eke out a little bit of levels right now, but as soon as uh, this wave clears, I actually think he backs, rotates one of the supports, and then grabs a TP and potentially looks towards mid, or just goes back up top with the supports again. I think the more likely target is mid. Like, you want to try to slow down Wii, but as soon as they see Pylai die here, it's going to be pretty unlikely. Solo. Just a bit of uh, disruption. Gotta be careful. They know it's a fake. Yeah, he's going to be slowed down twice by the traps, but Pilot I can't really make that committal. They saw the last time they tried to go up that hill. Vega Squadron were ready to respond with the Dazzle, and they fear the same kind of reprisal. All right, here we go. So he does grab the dust. He's uh, perfectly aware of what he wants to do. Going for Wiwaha would be pretty big. The rune is about to spawn in just 20 seconds. Maybe they use that as a timing to go for the bottom half of the map. Like, you send the Shadow Fiend or one of the heroes as well, and then just kind of bait it out. Yeah. Pilai Dai, they do have full vision of this as he's stacking up the Ancients. They Looks like they're going to go for the pick off on him. That's going to be a free kill. Yeah. Easy kill there. The only hope Pilai Dai maybe dies. Oh, oh, just, oh, oh, the dragon! You take it away from Mag. I think Mag could have right clicked, but he's yeah. like, oh, well, I got the kill. Yep. Hands off the keyboard. <laughs> Oh, regret. Dragon says no to that one. That's, That's gotta player. be so painful. That's his first rotation of the game, too. Yep. There, caught him. Nice disruption. Misery's gonna go down in the bottom lane. Great pickup for Pasha and Solo. Still 3-1 to one lead for Vega, but that first kill just has to hurt. Like, even if it's only a Crystal Maiden, it's more just the fact that you revealed that the ward was there, which is really important. Uh, and more than that is that you just kind of wasted your time with the first hook shot. Like, that could have been a kill on a mid-TA instead. Yeah. So all of those little things add up, and Mag really needs to get that he should back. have waited it out and gone for the pickoff on the Templar Assassin, even though it wasn't guaranteed, while the Crystal Maiden kill definitely was? No, I think going for the CM was fine. It was, yeah. like, <laughs> the worst possible scenario that could have happened. Yeah. Like, even the SF getting the kill would have been perfectly okay for Mag. It was just that one scenario that really hurt him. All right, no one's building into the mech right now. Almost has the buckler complete. Um, Pasha spending more time farming. Uh, okay. As I say that, they're actually going to smoke up with him. Uh, Mag has another hook shot ready to go, and I think they just really want to stop Weeha from farming. I'm not sure if uh, they should kind of know, because the Crystal Maiden was picked off there, that the ward is right there. Weeha is farming it up on the high ground, but eh, leading in, and Weeha actually does not have refraction. He's going to be burned through so quickly, and he might go for the kill on Mag, but there's a Shallow Grave and a Disruption. They're actually going to go and see if they can't clean up this stack with all five heroes. Oh, arrow arrow. In. They dodge it, but this is Moonlight Shadow. Team need Secret is definitely right going to fight this one. Maybe they shouldn't have gone for the stack at all. Mag managed to slip away from the Star Storm. Misery, though, has brought many of these heroes low. And Team Secret is just a sandwich. They're just going to cream Vega Squadron. If they can just get out the damage, Table Slayer is going to go down as well. No one gets hit by the arrow. And that's it. Four down from Vega Squadron. Was it worth it, says Team Secret. It definitely wasn't. And like Marlini talked about, it was that uh, Murata ultimate that set that all up. Vega had to know or at least be aware that that was an option. And... Oh, Pasha, he really wants to go for it, but he knows there's ensnare. Now oh, he's going to be able to jump over. Oh, the arrow! 
just barely off the mark as he slips away with that ultimate. And going for that was perfectly fine. It was just the fact that you don't have a sentry. Like, Mag even played that beautifully. He dives into the tree line, dodges the star storm, but not having a sentry for that fight, you know that Mirana is going to be level 6. Secret's definitely going to contest that because half your heroes are already dead. You have to be ready for that one. Now Vega Squadron, they don't stop the Weeha farming up that stacks. They gave a lot to the rest of Team Secret who collided in after Vega Squadron. Jump in, hook shot right on the pilot die. That's going to be a quick pick off there, but Weeha oh, will trying be to able to get the damage. turnaround kill. He's actually trying to... Oh, don't tell me! Pilot die gets a little lucky on that battery assault. It just lives with 4 HP. Oh. Nothing's going right for Vega Squadron right now. I don't even know what to say for Mag right now. I feel so bad for him. That's twice now. The first time he gets so screwed by the Ancient Camp. And okay, that one, maybe that was his fault, but the second one, he had like two HP left and every single battery tick hits Weeha. Oh, it's those little things that are going to turn the tournament around for Seeker right now. Yeah, Mag has just no item progression. He could have seen him go for some sort of utility item. Maybe he still felt like the blade mail would have been possible, but it just is going to come so late if he goes for it now. Solo, he's in super deep, and Weeha, he sees this one thanks to the ward over on the left-hand side. They're going to catch Solo. Arrow, yeah, that's the kill. Misery's just been on point this game. Even if it wasn't necessary, his rotations and what he's been able to accomplish with this Mirana. Typically, this is a hero that just completely falls off at some point of the game. I think it was like Puppy that actually said it. If you don't hit arrows with this hero, you kind of just lose the game and you're playing 4v5. Uh, but being able to get that solo kill on Mag, rotating constantly, using that clutch uh, Moonlight Shadow to start that fight, everything's just been going his way. And on the flip side of things, this might be like the unluckiest game in the world for Mag. First he dies solo at bottom, then that Ancients idea, uh, then going for the CM and not letting it work. He has to relax and say, okay, I can't tilt off of this. Just continue to play smart Dota. The moves I'm making are okay. I'm just getting a little bit unlucky. No one will complete the mech, but Eternal Envy is really not that far away either. He only needs another 400 gold, so that advantage is pretty much a wash now. Tier 1 tower in the top lane is going to go down. They get the deny, and can they actually get him? They still have the hook shot. If they force out the leap, they're going to go for the cogs first. And now they have to follow up with a hook shot. Misery, can he jump away in time? Battery salt, mag. Oh, the rocket gets it. Yeah, Misery does go down for his greed and doesn't even take that tier 1 tower. Gets denied by Vega. I thought like some natural disaster was gonna hit and Mag somehow <laughs> loses out on that kill. Like the satyr just like... All of a sudden an earthquake, down. the keyboard falls on the ground and he's unable to throw out the rocket. I mean that's actually how ridiculous his luck's been this entire game, but they finally get a kill onto that Mirana and that's a big one. Just for confidence more than anything, that kind of just like sets his ship right and he's like, okay, I can actually get kills, it's okay. Don't have to worry too much. I'm not completely cursed here in New York. That would have just been unbelievable. Uh, Puppy, what's he... Okay, he's got the arcane boots. Arcane's medallion is yeah. pretty standard, par for the course right now. Yeah, we used to see, like, the, um, remember ESL1 Frankfurt, we saw Glimmer Caves coming out. Do you think that'll ever make the return? Do you think that there's just too much value in the medallion? That was when Glimmer Cape was, like, the craziest item in Dota 2. Yeah. Uh, now it's just kind of okay. We're seeing it picked up a little bit less and less, and people are just favoring the Solar Crest once again. Even with the nerf to the Roshan ability, I think it's just so good. Yeah. If you look at Vega's lineup, who's really going to get an MKB early enough to make a difference? Yeah, if you look at the combination that Team Secret have, if they do get a medallion, you've got the Minus Armor, the Desolate that's going to come in from the Templar Assassin, and even that 5 second stun from the Marana Sacred Arrow is actually really valuable. Alright, so Misery's item build is actually going to be what's curious for me. He's got 1300 gold. Uh, I mean, looking at the side of Vega and looking at his lineup, I actually think he should build physical damage, mm -hmm. like not just letting Eternal Envy, because Eternal Envy is going to be a tank, like we saw in the previous game that he yeah. played Razor. I think it's better for this Mirana to actually just build raw damage, and Mag so aggressively plays mid right now, and Vega... How do you build raw damage on a Mirana now? Uh, we used to see Maelstrom picked up, Desolator was also a pickup, but that's obviously going to go on the TA. Mag actually starts his initiation, he wants to be able to lock down Puppy, but realized with Eternal oh, Envy here, he's not going to be able to do it, now he actually cogs and sucks Eternal Envy inside of that one, the Naga Sarn throws out the sleep, but Mag, oh well, he actually gets a shell great, maybe he can TP out in time, Frostbite isn't really there, Mag gets out, the arrow slides right past everyone on Vega Squadron, no one lets loose the ultimate, Eternal Envy just dropped very low, he gets exploded, right on through comes Pasha, goes straight from Israel, 
Fury, oh, and they'll be able to run down. Actually, the Refraction, Weeha doesn't have anything out for eight seconds. He's going to be run down by Vega Squadron. Three go down on Secret, and Vega Squadron, if you don't succeed, try, try again. And this time around, the team fight goes their way. Honestly, that was just so much hesitation from Secret. It looked like for a second they thought to themselves, okay, the Clockwork got out, the Shallow Grave's been used, let's run at them, and then no one was charging up his ultimate, and they sort of just hem and hawed a little bit too long, and they're like, uh, do we stay and fight? And then they just got blown up by the SF ult. Yeah, I didn't exactly see it, but they did miss the arrow sleep combination, right? I think that the, the arrow slid past the hero while it was still invulnerable, and then the sleep went. Because I just saw the arrow and it just slid past everyone. That's the only reason I could see it just doesn't hit anything, is that the timing was slightly off. The hero was still invulnerable when it went past. Yeah, and it honestly felt like... If that hits and Secret take a 4v5 fight because Mag wasn't there, obviously, they probably win that fight. But if you hem and you haul like that and you're not really sure what you're going for, and then you decide at the last second, okay, we're not going to fight, well, the SF ult still did half of H Envy's HP. And that's supposed to be your tankiest hero. So the boots of travel now complete for Pasha. Arrow. Sidesteps it very nicely. He's got the Dazzle behind him anyway, so he should be fine no matter what kind of aggression comes out from Team Secret. They have the Desolator, their Dire Side, Roshan should be their next objective, but we'll see if they actually get the space, because Pilot Eye, he's just going to be run down by Pasha. Mirana leaves the lane for half a second, and Pasha just pounces immediately. And this is just kind of all turning around, and this again, this is just Vegas style. Bring all your cores, take out, take down all the early towers, we're okay with over committing for tier 1s. Because Secret just doesn't really anticipate having to get into this big of a fight this early on, and Misery's gonna let loose with another arrow. Is it gonna hit? No. Ooh, that would have been a five second one on Solo, but he actually throws out the purge on a turtle enemy. Ultimate goes down from no one, not doing that much damage on the left hand side. Max actually commits onto Weeha, just trying to make sure that they lock down that one. Good disruption. They're gonna go for Weeha now that he doesn't have refraction. Comes up just now, but it gets burned through so quickly. It doesn't seem to matter. With all that damage over time, especially with the Ember Spirit Flame Guard, they rip through that thing incredibly quickly and Vega Squadron now take control. Tier 1 tower and possibly even a tier 2 could be theirs. This is lessening the hold on uh, Roshan for Team Secret. This is so hard for Secret to fight right now because you've got heroes like Templar Assassin that thrive on being able to win uh, these early engagements when she's incredibly strong but when you've got a hero like Ember that can just uh, knock off her refraction charges really quickly, long range initiate with that sleight of fist uh, searing chains. I mean, Vega's got so much backup. You've got the disruption in case somebody gets arrowed. You've got the grave, you've got the mech on no one. And this is just like a three part uh, safety system that they've set up for themselves. So that no matter what happens in the fight, one of the heroes can do something. And once again, the arrow dodges are on point. They had counter wards in place, so they knew Team Secret is surging forward on the Moonlight Shadow. And they were definitely on their toes, prepared for some sort of response. Secret is going to be caught here. Poppy pops the ultimate. You've got the arrow in one second. That's oh. what they're setting up for right and now. Lock down Pasha. The arrow goes out. It does hit Pasha this time around. They're going to try oh, and get the first down. He, it on the other hero. he gets a shallow grave and the refraction on the Weehaw stops all the damage. Now Team Secret is going to be forced back. Matt comes forward, hits the hook shot, but he doesn't want to stay there for long. The trap goes down. No one's going to be slowed down long enough. He knows he can't really get out, so he's just trying to turn and fight. Mag throws out the cogs to push back some of Team Secret, but they're staying alive and they're trying to go for more. Arrow slides right on past, but a Starlight Shadow actually takes him out. Now Dad is going to be the next up, caught in the trees, unable to escape there, and solo TP away, he'll get out. So only two survive for Vega Squadron as they get a little bit perhaps overconfident and try and push things into the tier two tower, and that's exactly the opening that Team Secret needed. Yes, Vega Squadron, when they won the fight, they took a tier one and pressured a tier two, but when Secret, with all this physical damage, they win a team fight, they get Roshan, and that means so much. Yeah, this is just going to lead to Weeha being able to frontline tank non-stop. Uh, you might think about giving it to Eternal Envy for a second, but Weeha is just so uh, over-farmed right now. And he's got so many levels on him that there's no real debate about it. And at the same time, I mean, that was just an opening on the Ember Spirit. He had to play defensively that entire fight. Like, usually when Vega's winning these fights, it's the Ember Spirit stepping forward with that Chains, with that Slide of Fist, but you saw he had to use both of his Fire Remnants just to get out of that fight. And then he really didn't want to risk it anymore. Yeah, they didn't have the ultimate either from no one because he had used it earlier in the last team fight. So I think that was um, a big loss for them as well. I think the, the biggest mistake there was that they ended up disrupting the Templar Assassin instead of just immediately disrupting the Ember Spirit. They instead opted to go for the Grave on him, and, but I don't think that was the right idea because all you do is you disrupt him, he took no damage from the arrow because of the Flame Guard, then he can actually get aggressive in these fights, yeah. and then maybe they can hold the line, but because they wasted the disruption on a TA that actually didn't end up doing anything, they just kind of get crushed in the fight.
Mag searching for a pickoff. Now that he's got that blade mail, he's feeling pretty confident about his chances of winning a one versus one. A diffuser blade now for Misery. That removes the Ember Flame Guard, flame yeah. guard instantly. Mm -hmm. And it's got uh, that no cooldown now as well. So he could just, you know, catch out multiple heroes in a team fight. When when they break, essentially, when they break Vega Squadron and Vega Squadron to start backing up, that's when, you know, the active of the Diffuser Blade no longer having a cooldown can allow him to perhaps pick off, you know, one or two extra heroes. I think that's actually a really intelligent pick up by Misery because if you look at Secret's lineup, they don't have heavy uh, magic nuke or burst damage to take down the flame, uh, the flame guard. And the flame guard is actually kind of destroying the Templar Assassin in all of these fights. So if he just immediately gets it taken away, you're gonna help out Weeha, you're gonna make Pasha think twice about initiating. Uh, and it's kind of like dealing 500 instant magic damage, pretty much. Yeah, they need some way to be able to curb his aggression. Looks like uh, Clockwork does catch out Puppy, but Puppy has the Glimmer Cape. We'll be able to stay alive because of that. And everybody from Secret's filtering in, but all Vega's trying to do right now is waste time because they don't want Secret to take multiple objectives with that Aegis, but it looks like Secret just want to gather up for this mid lane. Uh, Vega, looks like they actually want to take this fight. Yeah, he may be caught here. He actually melts just the perfect time, dodges a slight of his chains combo. You gotta get out now. Poshita, yeah, they've got to back up because you never know that Naga Siren's nearby for the sleep. Turns out Puppy actually had to go all the way back to base from that last clockwork bit. Just slow down the pace of the game if you're Vega. If you're Secret, you have to just start getting aggressive everywhere. You've got this Aegis advantage. There's still two tier one avail tier one towers available. Uh, and you can just kind of play off of that. And it's definitely going to make Vega think twice about getting into these five on five engagements like they're so used to. But Vega's just going five men again. Puppy's got the sleep available though. Two minutes left for that Aegis Vega squadron. Looks like they're just gonna try and stay away from Team Secret and go up to that top lane. Two things can happen here. They either five man it, they take the tier one tower, and they're happy with gaining an objective during this critical time for a Team Secret having that Aegis advantage, or they force rotations and hopefully back out safely. Either way, it's uh, gonna gain something out of Team Secret. Hook shot in, they're actually gonna force this fight, going straight onto Puppy here. He does have the Glimmer Cape help keeping him alive. He's not able to get off the mirror image until the last second, but he still gets burned away. Weeha has already burned through his refractor. Oh, Misery just gets three shot. Here comes Eternal Infinity for the side. Misery's already down. Now they turn onto Eternal Heavy. It could have been a sandwich, but the right side of Team Secret just fails, and now Eternal Heavy's oh, left with no way. Isolated. He's going to be locked inside the cogs and ripped apart by the physical damage of Vega Squadron. That double damage comes in big for no one. I mean, I think he, he act did he have the leap available? Because he actually just got three shot. They immediately clear one of the core heroes, and then Vega feels so confident taking that fight. They all in for that Naga. I thought for a second Mag was insane, but he completely trusts his team there. Because if they don't get that kill instantly, and you actually get the sleep off, then you're in a terrible situation as Vega because you've got an Aegis TA coming in, you could get hit by the arrow in the cogs. There are a lot of different things that could go wrong there. Pasha jumps on here. Already down to half HP from that physical damage, but uh, Vega Squadron. Oh, Jesus. All right, there goes that Aegis. It's still dead. Oh, he's going to ult on top of it. Ult on top of it. Has to reset the timing, but here comes the sleep. And this could be real nasty. The problem is they don't have that Razor. Can they really take it without Razor? No one doesn't have the Oh, no one is very low here. Can they get a save out? The Shell Grace is oh, still alive. No one getting away from Misery. Leaps right in for that one. Gets the kill. But now Weeha is like locked nice. inside of the cogs. They're going for Misery on the left-hand side. They're going to be able to get Weeha as well as Misery Puppy. He pushes forward. Looks like they're going to be able to get Max Shell Grace. TP out, Matt, can he actually get out of this one? Where's the stop? There's nothing there. He gets away. Don't tell me Dazzle's getting out as well. He doesn't. He does go down. Vega Squadron keep the clockwork and the Ember Spirit alive, but they walk away pretty big. Tier 1, Tier 2, two different team fights kind of going their way, especially, I think, the biggest kill there, Weeha's Templar Assassin. They definitely could have gone out like bandits, though. Like, it was the Shadow Fiend, they opted to go for the grave on the... The Shadow Demon actually instead. Yes. Like he had one HP left. The Shadow, uh, the Shadow Fiend. All you do is save him there, force Misery to go even deeper to get that kill, and then maybe he survives. Because then you can just turn three shot Misery, run away, and there's not a whole lot that Secret can do about it. But 
I think the Dazzle really just didn't expect that high amount of physical damage to be placed on the SF. He sees the arrow and he figures, okay, Team Secret are going to kind of funnel into that Shadow Demon and try and take away that support real quickly. So he just throws the Shallow Grave, grave early and then notices, oh man, Shadow Fiend, he just got ripped apart by that one-shot melt from Templar Assassin. That brought him down to like half HP by itself. The follow-up damage is what uh, almost finished him. But that's got to be pretty... Uh, disheartening if you're Team Secret because you had the Aegis there and you still lost that fight pretty hard and you yeah. gave up multiple towers You weren't able to even set up a proper fight and it was just on the back of a slip up from Vega That actually led to that being okay for you because they didn't have the Shadow Fiend mech up They misused the disruption and the grave and if either of those things go well, I feel like Vega actually just destroys that fight We've got an early talisman of evasion on the SF we really like this pickup against the Templar Assassin. If you can dodge that meld strike, that'll be such a huge win. But just any of the right clicks from the Templar Assassin are pretty devastating. They've got to play around EE better. It honestly yeah. just feels like they're not utilizing this Razor very well. Uh, every single time they get into a fight, the Razor's on the opposite end of his team. And he's trying to frontline tank, but your mech isn't as useful when you're the only one losing HP. No one clears through the waves. Vega Squadron. I guess they do have another double damage. This time around, it's on Pasha, who has that Battle Fury. This could be how they plan on uh, winning this fight. Arrow Working goes out, in. hits the Illusion of Bag. Jump in. They're going to grab it. Turtle Levy here. Can they actually take him with the Blade Mills? Oh, they're going to burst him down. Damage. They do have the Glimmer Cape, but yeah, Turtle Levy's already dropped down to half HP even after the mech. A couple more right clicks. They will be able to finish him off, but they can't quite catch up. Never mind. A Slide of Fist comes out from Pasha. Finish him out. Pylite Die just gets blown up as well. Look at Misery. Another slight. They're going to be able to go down. No. Sleep comes in. They're right in front of that Tier 3 right, tower. The arrow? But it's on cooldown. They can't do anything. They just have to use this as a retreat, and Vega Squadron will take the Tier 2 tower as a bounty and might even keep pushing forward. 40 seconds on the clock for Eternal Envy, and he does not have buyback either. They don't have the Shadow Fiend Ultimate or the mech available, and no one doesn't actually have too much uh, mana or HP, but you just want to try to get aggressive, take down this tower. If Eternal Envy had buyback, he would have used it by now. And it's only a tower at the same time, so Team Secret's got to feel okay, but they're most likely losing at least one Rax for this one. Tier 3 tower, arrow comes out. They managed to catch Mag there, but it doesn't really do much. Oh, they they can't down. lose him! Oh, Jesus! He just goes down so quickly. Now it's going to be the melee racks forfeit at this point in time. Vega Squadron, they're just all in on the, all landing on that one. Vega Squadron now trying to get out after the melee racks. Sam the Slayer pops oh, the Shadow Dragon. Looking away, it. TP's out. Solo, he's going to be caught. Mag looks like he may go down as well. Slowed down by the defusal active. That's two, but they needed so much more for the loss of their melee racks. They had to grab one of the cores because you committed the Templar Assassin buyback. And you have to just head straight for that mid lane now and grab that tier 1 at the very least. Vega's in full control of this game now. They know that the Templar Assassin buyback's been used. They know that we or, uh, Eternal Envy doesn't have one, or he would have used it in that defense. And right. Secret are going to get aggressive, but if they lose this fight, that could just mean the game for them. And look at that. They can't even continue to push onto the tier 2 tower with the harassment of the Slight of Fist. Dealing out so much damage. That's a Crystalis now in our Ember Spirit by 28 minutes. And the problem's going to be Vega Squadron will actually have full five up right as Team Secret go for Roshan. Vega Squadron might be able to intercept this, but the damage from Weeha is just so potent against Rosh. They should know about the smoke right now, and Solo is just going to spam out the poison in here and going to run into Pylite Dive, who's already used that Force Staff, and Solo might actually just get a free kill jump here. inside the Roshan pit. Puppy actually pops the ultimate. They're desperately trying oh, to finish him off. Roshan comes in. Oh, Roshan dropping so low. They will be able to pick up the engine just in time, but the team fight just collides on in, and Weeha, congrats, buddy. You got the Aegis, but are you even going to be able to live through this one. Cog's ultimate bounce around like a pinball. Bye bye, Weeha. You do get out with that Razor and that Crystal Maiden, but that's such a huge commitment. The Templar Assassin is dead. I actually think that Vega just go for this bottom tier 2 push, and this should just mean the game, at least a second set of racks, and I don't really know if Secret can continue on with this game. You don't have the physical damage besides the Templar Assassin. She doesn't have a BKB yet. She can't be the frontliner that you need her to be, and Eternal Envy in all of these fights just gets instantly blown up.
20 to 15, 30 minutes in Vega Squadron. They're not even holding on to that big of a net worth lead. It's only 5,000, but it just feels like they're controlling this game so well. And the last few fights have gone so big in their favor. Eternal Levy rushes forward, does get the four staff save from Pilot Die. And Mag actually missing out on the hook shot, still hoping to be able to get the cogs, push them out instead. Unfortunately, though, well, maybe Pasha can move forward. Eternal Levy is dropped. He's down for a full minute with nothing. Pasha, though, hit by the arrow. The team immediately surrounds Pasha, makes sure he does escape and now they focus back on that tier 3 tower without the Templar Assassin without Eternal Levy's Razor how could they possibly fight this one you're actually just gonna lose a Rax there's not much you can do about it Secret are just kind of play uh, waste as much time as possible but I don't even know if they can do this Mag without getting out chasing down misery he's got a leap he's trying I have to leap forward oh no right to the waiting hands of Pasha slide a visit a right click now back to the melee racks immediate buyback from our Marana, but it's a second melee racks that goes down and Vega Squadron even feel comfortable enough to stick around for the range as well they've got a butterfly now for the SF and Vega Squadron just on the cusp of being able to take out Team Secret and win this trophy at ESL 1 New York Every single time Mag is there with the initiation, gets clutch power cogs at every juncture. And I mean, we laughed at him in the beginning because he just had so many unlucky team fights. But when it counts, the five men is so strong for Vega and two racks up and Secret are just kind of scratching their heads because they don't have the damage anymore. Like most of the time, the fight instantly starts and they're on the run. Pasha is getting so big, they're going to have an Aghanim Scepter for Mag, so he can throw out multiple hook shots in these team fights now. And you can even see Mystery's just fishing at this point, throwing out blind arrows, hoping to be able to catch anything. But Vega Squadron are already five men up the top lane. They feel like they've got such a big advantage. They know they just have to stay grouped up. Moonlight Shadow goes down, and it looks like Vega Squadron knew what happened. You've got a Shadow Demon with an Ags as well, and I mean, Vega senses... Uh, that they're so close to victory right now. All they have to do is wait things out, play safe. The game is completely in their hands right now. That was a smoke and a moonlight shadow used. And Team Secret just ran straight into the engine area, expecting to find someone there from Vega Squadron farming, but no such luck. Vega, they see the objectives in mind. Blood is in the water. All they have to do is just five man down win. Do you really want to fight into a weave right now? If you're Secret, but... I mean, taking a fight by your base is probably a losing oh, proposition. Over the side, two man's inside the cogs. Meanwhile, oh, what a big jump in from the Ember Spirit. He's just going to be able to pop one immediately by Templar Assassin. Now Misery's going to be caught as well. Mag trying to chase him down. Gets a leap over the jungle. Nagasar's sleep, but immediately he goes down before it even completes. Pilot Die will TP out in time. But again, they're without their Templar Assassin. It just feels impossible for Team Seeker to be able to mount a defense without their heavy damage dealer. Yeah, you're not going to be able to hold this anymore. This is going to be the last Rax. Eternal Envy is going to do all he can to hold this, but... All in, going all in Eternal right Eternal now. Envy, he's going to be caught by the Cogs. He's going to go down as well. He doesn't have a buyback misery. He just goes in with the Mask Command. He's trying to output as much damage as possible, but his supports are crumpling, and he too is going to fall if he sticks around, and that's it! Vega Squadron taking it! Game number three against Team Secret! What an unbelievable performance by them. Everything goes wrong in the laning phase. Even the mid-game fights by the Ancients don't go their way, but they hold strong. They stick to their guns. They trust their supports to be able to save their cores. Well played by Vega all around. Perseverance through and through is what Vega Squadron is. They stuck together.